Hello well, guys, I hope y'all are having a good 2021 so far. I am so far having a much better 2021 than I was with 2020. Hopefully it stays that way. And granted, I know some world stuff is a little jacked up right now, especially with that whole capital business. So I am wanting to do some more true crime videos. Y'all also requested me to do more true crime and I kind of want to do something a little bit different hopefully it works out in this video and i hope you guys like the way i decide to do these videos and if you have any requests i do true crime paranormal uh like just things that are odd um those are kind of the niche here on this channel like spooky weird stuff and if you guys have a true crime case that you would like to see me talk about go ahead and comment it down below i i try to put them all in a list so i can get to your guys's first january 26 2013 eliza lamb landed in la she had just came by amtrak train from san diego and was headed to santa cruz as part of her solo trip around the west coast the trip was supposed to be a gateway from her studies at the University of British Columbia. Her family had been worried about her traveling alone, but the young student was determined. As a compromise, Lam made sure to check in every day so that her parents would know how her trip was going and that she was safe. That's why it struck her parents odd when her daughter didn't check in on January 31st, the day that she was supposed to leave. Eliza's parents eventually contacted the LA police and they went and searched the Cecil Hotel, which is where she was staying, but there was no sign of Eliza. And little did they know how bizarre things were about to get. The hotel surveillance footage caught video of Eliza in the elevator acting rather strangely the day that she disappeared. The footage caught her stepping in, in and out of the elevator pressing buttons, peering out, and reacting very strangely. That video went viral and the theories went wild. On February 19th, two weeks after Liza's disappearance, maintenance worker Santiago Lopez found Liza Lamb's body floating in the water tanks above the Cecil Hotel. Lopez made the discovery after several complaints from guests in the hotel complaining of stinky, strange tasting water that was appearing black. According to a statement by the chief of Los Angeles Fire Department, the tank where Lamb's body was found had to be drained completely and cut open from the side so they could retrieve her body. Nobody knows how the lamb's body got into the water tower. She was naked, but the same clothes she was wearing in the surveillance tape were floating in the tank with her. Witnesses stated that they always saw a lamb hanging out by herself, but at least one person had seen her before she disappeared at a bookstore called The Last Bookstore which was where she was last seen alive, buying books to bring back to her family in Vancouver. It seems that Lamb had plans to go home and reconnect with her family. When Lamb's toxicology reports came back, it caused more questions than answers. There was no illegal drugs or alcohol in her system, just her medications that were to maintain her bipolar disorder. After the toxicology report came out, internet sleuths poured over the reports, trying to figure out the mystery of what happened to Eliza Lamb. One of the reports that had posted a breakdown of her toxicology report stated that one, Lamb had took at least one antidepressant that day, and two, Lamb had taken her second antidepressant and mood stabilizer recently, but not that day. 
and Lamb had not taken her antipsychotic recently. This conclusion suggested that Lamb, who had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and depression, may have not been taking her medications properly. And it is also important to note that giving the use of antidepressants to treat bipolar disorder can risk inducing manic side effects if done without caution. So the theory is that her odd behavior might have been from a side effect of not taking her medications properly. And originally when Lamb was booked in the hotel, she was booked with other people and they had to move her to a room by herself because the other people were uncomfortable with her strange behavior. But even if Eliza Lamb had been suffering from mental illness, how did she die and how did she end up in that water tank? According to her autopsy, which they weren't able to examine her blood from the decomposing body, they did not detect any evidence of foul play. Lamb's parents did file for a wrongful death suit against the hotel. The Lamb's attorney stated that the hotel had a duty to inspect and seek out hazards in the hotel that were a reasonable risk of danger to Lamb and other hotel guests. The hotel fought back against the suit, filing a motion to dismiss it. The hotel's lawyer argued that the hotel had no reason to think that somebody would be able to get into one of their water tanks. Just because you don't think or don't have a reason to think that somebody would go in the water tank, wouldn't you still be like, you know, checking on the water tank, making sure it's fine? Because that's the water supplies? like. Wouldn't you be making sure that no one's able to get onto the roof because as dark as it's going to sound, you know, suicides do happen at hotels. I mean, that's, from what I understand, that's the reason why hotel rooms have Bibles in them. Um... I'm just saying, I, I, I'm a little concerned at the lack of checking on this water tower. Just, I'm just saying, I think that they should have been a little more, like, checking on that type of thing. It just seems like it's an important part of the hotel. Oh, you mean this tower right here, full of liquid that is for our guests to uh, drink and bathe in? It's uh, pretty essential. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not important enough to check on regularly. <laughs> so silly. Based on court statements from the hotel's maintenance staff, the hotel's argument is not entirely far-fetched. Santiago Lopez described in detail how much effort he had to exert just to find her body. Lopez said that he took the elevator to the 15th floor of the hotel before walking up the staircase to the roof. Then he had to first turn off the rooftop alarm and climb up the platform where the hotel's four water tanks were located. Then he had to first turn off the rooftop alarm and climb up the platform where the hotel's four water tanks were located. Finally, he had to climb another ladder to get to the top of the main tank. Only after that did he notice something unusual. I noticed the hatch to the main water tank was open and looked inside and saw an Asian woman laying face up in the water approximately 12 inches from the top of the tank. What? I'm busy. Busy. Can you stop arguing with me? I am busy. Lopez said, as reported by LAist, Lopez's testimony suggested that it would have been difficult for Lamb to make it to the top of the water tank on her own, at least not without anyone noticing. The hotel's chief engineer, Pedro Tovar, I think I said that wrong also made it clear that it would be difficult for anyone to access the rooftop where the hotel water tanks were located without triggering the alarms. 
Only hotel employees would be able to deactivate the alarms properly if it was triggered. The sound of the alarm would reach the front desk as well as the engine top two floors of the hotel. Los Angeles is a pre Superior Court Judge Howard Helm ruled that the death of Eliza Lamb was unforeseeable because it had happened in an area that guests were not allowed to access. So the lawsuit was dismissed. Personally, I find that to be da -da 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 -da, bullshit. While the answer to the mysterious death behind Eliza Lamb remains unclear, the obsession surrounding the case continues. Okay, so, you know, <laughs> I find it really interesting that they make it sound like it's so difficult to get to the top of the roof and into the towers. Because if I remember correctly, in like the original report, they were seeing how the rooftop was locked and that the water tank was closed and they found her. But in reality, apparently there was a fire escape get to the roof from like it's apparently not that hard to get onto the roof and the water tank door was open here's a video of a journalist getting up there and it wasn't that long after eliza's death justified in suing the hotel because to me it seems like they really don't have things locked up like they say as much as i love a good mystery and and spirits to be involved i feel that this was just a combination of bad things that were an inevitable shitstorm is this poor woman was having some sort of psychotic break who knows what was going on through her mind but she found her way up on the roof and into that water tank i believe that she jumped in there on her own free will and she probably stripped down when she got inside again who knows what was going through her mind when this was all happening i guess my heart goes out to her it, it's so sad that things ended the way that they ended for her. I don't see this as being a mystery anymore. It seems, at least to me, maybe others disagree, but to me it seems that this poor woman was suffering from mental illness and she was having a, some sort of psychosis, most likely due from improperly taking her meds, combined with not that much difficulty getting on that roof, like, we don't know what was going through her mind. And she jumped into that water tank and took her clothes off. To me, that's pretty obvious what was happening. As much as I love a good mystery and like a, ooh, evil spirits are involved, not in this case. And my heart goes out to the lambs. May your daughter rest in peace and may you have peace. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Get down! Get down!